I'm here with Jake Grimes, the assistant coach of the Belleville Bulls. Jake, the guys down in the den, they have a couple of questions they wanted to ask, so hopefully you can answer them for them. Um, the first question uh, is, what is it like to coach the team that you once played for? Oh, it's real exciting. I mean, you have a certain perspective of what the team is like and, and what the town is like that you're living in when you're a young fella, uh, 16 to, to, to 19 type age, and then uh, you come back as a, as a family guy with your own family, and it's, it's nice to come back. It's, it's really a super place to be, and much of the same fans are still the same fans, so you get to know, you know, you sort of move back to town after being away for 10 to 12 years, and you already know everybody, so it's kind of exciting that way. Yeah, that is nice. That is nice. Um, now, you were very successful in the OHL, scoring 113 points in the 91-92 season. And then you were drafted to the Ottawa Senators. How hard was it to give up your dream due to injuries? Oh, real tough at that point because, I mean, like many of these guys, you gear everything that you have towards becoming a professional athlete, and it's, uh, and it's not easy. And uh, when you become one and then you lose that opportunity, it's pretty devastating. You really don't know what you're going to do for the next uh, 10, 15 years of your life, and you've got to find a new, uh, a new route. So, uh, yeah, I still have trouble with it. I still wish I could have played or still would have played because I felt that that's what I was supposed to do with, uh, with my time uh, leading up to uh, leading up to my uh, you know mid-age life there so um, you got to find other things to do I went back to school and uh, finished a degree in economics and uh, got into the coaching field so uh, coaching is very rewarding as well I mean when you're a player you're helping yourself you know to get to be the best you can be and and when you're a coach you get to help 22 other guys uh, sort of be the best they can be so there's reward in that too talking about reward and, and getting the guys to be the best that you can be coaching a minor league team you know you know, how, how do you feel about um, just being a role model for these guys? Do you feel almost like sometimes you have to be like a second father figure to some of these, these kids? Well, you do. I mean, these guys come right out of their households at the age of 16, most of them. Uh, they're leaving their homes. They're leaving their parents. They're leaving their schools. They're leaving their friends. They're leaving their town. So they start over when they come here, and they're coming into a league that's very difficult to play in as a young guy. They've got to make new friends. They've got to go to a new school. They come into a new house to live in. Uh, a long, long list of tasks for these young guys, and their parents aren't with them every day. So it's the coaching staff and the training staff that uh, need to fill in the blanks for these situations and, uh, and help them become good, strong young men. Do you find that hard sometimes? Uh, you know what? It isn't because uh, it, 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 it's, it's, again, rewarding as well. I mean, it's, it's one of those situations where as they're here to play hockey uh, uh, first and foremost and get their schooling done, and uh, we can you know, help control those aspects. And we kind of link, as coaches, we link everything together. Their behavior off the ice, their behavior in the classroom, their performance in the classroom, the keeping power with where, with where they used to be as far as what their marks were when they came. All that stuff is linked to, uh, to opportunity on the ice. And what they really want is opportunity on the ice. So we link the whole thing together and try to, try to uh, make a complete package out of it. So it's a full-time job. Your cell phone never turns off, but it's, uh, but it's, uh, it's exciting when they, when they leave here. Uh, good people and good players. Good, good. Now, my last question is, do you have any tips for those young guys coming up and they want to, you know, get into the OHL, get into the NHL eventually? Any tips for them? Absolutely. And they're some of the most basic things you can think of. It's, it's, it's how bad do you want it. You know, if you really want it that bad, you're going to put the time in because you've got to put time, time, time into your craft. You know, it's uh, off the ice, on the ice, uh, trying to get better at all times, and your habits are key. I mean, it sounds like old school stuff, but what time do you go to bed at night? What time do you get up in the morning? What are you eating throughout the day? All these things add up, you know, and, and figuring it out that it's a 12-month process to become a hockey player, not just a seven or eight month. It's all kinds of things. What do you do in the summer? You know, are you training hard in the summer? Are you finding ice time in the summer? All those things add up, and then, and then you, you're left with your ability to handle adversity. When everything is going well and something goes wrong, can you handle it? You know, do you know what you know how to deal with those things? So you add all that together, and it's pretty hard to stop a guy. Good stuff. How bad do you want it? Well, um, thank you so much um, for for answering some of those questions for us. Um, and we are going to go out, and I'm going to learn how to do a slap shot, <laughs> and we'll see how that goes.